Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this result. So here we have a power series S of Z is equal to this summation. Okay. So we have a power series with some circle of convergence of a disc or disc of convergence. So here we assume it has circle of convergence mod Z minus Z naught is equal to R. So here we have a circle with center Z naught and radius R. Okay, radius is R. So we have a circle like this. So this is circle of convergence, you can say, or disk of convergence. It means if you take any point inside a circle, for that point, the power series is convergent. And if you take any point outside the circle, then for that point, the power series is divergent. So such circle of convergence or disk of convergence we have. C is a simple closed curve. What they are saying? C is a simple closed curve inside the disk of convergence or in an interior of disk of convergence. That means C can be here. It is a closed curve. That means starting and ending point same. And it is simple. It is simple. That means it does not intersect itself. Okay. So such curve we have inside the disk of convergence. G is any continuous function defined on this. C. It is continuous on C. We have to prove this equality. Okay. The final aim is to prove this one. What is S of Z? S of Z is summation we have getting. So if you put its value here, we have a summation here. That means summation inside the integration. And in the right hand side, what happened? That summation came outside. Getting the point, that means what we have to prove exactly? We have to prove that summation and integration can interchange. If you have a finite summation, definitely we can do that. But see here we have an infinite summation. That means infinitely many terms are there. Then also we can interchange. So this is our main task to prove. Okay. So let us start with a given information. So what is the given thing? Let me write. We have. We have. So the given information is that S of Z. So let me write. S of Z is equal to summation n running from 0 to infinity a n Z minus Z naught rest to n. See how many terms are there? Infinitely many terms are there. So we can split it in two summations. Let me write summation n running from 0 to n minus 1. That means first n terms we have considered here. And second part contains infinitely many terms. So that means n running from capital N to infinity a n z minus z naught rest to n. So generally we denote it by rho n of z which is a remainder function. Okay. So let us write summation n running from 0 to n minus 1 a n z minus z naught rest to n plus rho n of z. So this is the remainder. Get it? So what we have to prove, we have to prove this one. So you can easily see, okay, so there is a product of G of Z and S of Z. Right now we have S of Z. So let us multiply both sides by G of Z. So we will have this product, okay. So multiplying, let me write, multiplying both sides by G of Z, okay. So let us see what we get. So we have a space, let us use. So we will have, therefore, G of Z into S of Z is equal to, okay, so we have to uh, take product with this right hand side also. So we have summation n running from 0 to n minus 1, a n G of Z, Z minus Z naught raised to n, getting, and now we have to take product with this row n of Z plus g of z rho n of z okay so after that we have a integration so let us integrate both sides okay we are taking integration over c so therefore integration over c g of z s of z dz is equal to integration over c that's summation okay addition is there so that's why we can take separate separate integration and i'm going to do the same n running from 0 to n minus 1, a n g of z, z minus z naught raised to n dz plus integration over c. Now I am integrating 
this part so g of z rho n of z dz okay but as you can see here this summation has finite number of terms n running from 0 to n minus 1 so definitely we can interchange that summation and integration since having only finite number of terms see there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it first then i will go further okay see uh, let us interchange summation and integration so therefore integration over c g of z s of z dz is equal to summation will come outside n running from 0 to n minus 1 because it has only finite number of terms right integration over c n g of z z minus z naught raised to n dz plus we have this second integration also integration over c g of z rho n of z dz okay so let us call it as equation number one so now there is a need to work on this part and then we will uh, continue equation number one so the most important thing is we are talking that summation okay inside the circle of convergence that means that summation is convergent so let us use that thing we have we have that power series summation n running from 0 to infinity n z minus z naught raised to n is convergent okay since we are talking about the uh, disk of convergence or a circle of convergence so that means for any point of circle of convergence this power series is definitely convergent we know that if any power series is convergent its remainder function tends to zero so let us use that thing so therefore what can we say mod rho n of z tends to zero as n tends to infinity so let us write the same thing in terms of epsilon getting so you know that if you have any convergent sequence or any see same thing we can write in terms of epsilon also as n tends to infinity it goes to zero so therefore we can write for given epsilon greater than zero there exists n naught belongs to set of natural number such that such that mod rho n of z less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to i should write here capital n greater than or equal to n naught okay so this is so much important thing we have got so let us call it as two okay so g of z is continuous function on this closed curve c so that's why we can say it will have some maximum value and we will call it as m so let us consider let m be a maximum value of g of z on c okay so this thing also we have considered and c is a closed curve simple closed curve so it will have some length let us call it as l okay so let l is equal to length of curve c that means what we have done see this equation number one we had got g of z we have called its maximum value is m rho n of z we proved that it is less than epsilon and we have an integration over c so c is a curve with length l so all things are prepared now so now we are ready to use ml inequality ml inequality so in ml inequality whatever function we have we say that it is less than or equal to m and whatever the curve integration over c its length is l then value of integration mod of value of integration is less than or equal to ml okay so that inequality i'm going to use here see make a screenshot of it then i will go further so therefore i can write therefore by ml inequality we can write the mod of integration over c g of z rho n of z dz is less than or equal to g of z its maximum value is mc we should have a mod here mod g, uh, m be the maximum value of this mod g of z it is m mod rho n of z it is less than epsilon and length 
of a curve is L. So that's why it is less than or equal to M epsilon L. Okay, by M in ML inequality, we could write it. See, in the right hand side, we have epsilon. And epsilon means what? Very small positive real number. So you can take epsilon is equal to 0 0.000001, getting? And this mod is less than that. We are getting the point. That means here we have a full freedom to minimize the epsilon and definitely we can find n which will be less than that, right? So yes, I should mention for all n greater than or equal to n naught. So it is true for this one, getting? So the same thing we can write in this way. So therefore, what can we say? Therefore, limit n tends to infinity integration over c g of z rho n of z dz is equal to 0. Because of this inequality, we could write as n tends to infinity value of this integration is 0. So this is so much important thing we have got. So let us call it as 3. So now let us go back to equation number one and let us start to work on it. Let me mention from one, we have, let me simply copy paste equation one, integration over C, G of Z, S of Z, DZ is equal to summation N running from zero to N minus one, integration over C, N, G of Z, z minus z naught raised to n dz plus integration over c g of z rho n of z dz. Now I am taking limit n tends to infinity on both sides. Okay, taking limit n tends to infinity of both sides. Okay, I am going to take limit of both sides. Make a screenshot of it first, then I will go further. But see, in left hand side, there is no any capital N. So if you apply the limit, you will have the same thing. So let us copy paste this part. So integration over C, G of Z, S of Z dz is equal to. So here I am applying the limit. Limit N tends to infinity summation n running from 0 to n minus 1, right? Integration over c, a n g of z, z minus z naught raised to n dz plus here also we can apply the limit since we have n here. Limit n tends to infinity integration over c, g of z rho n of z dz okay so therefore integration over c g of z s of z dz if you apply the limit here n tends to infinity that means that summation will be from n to n is equal to 0 to infinity okay so by applying limit we will have simply summation n running from 0 to infinity integration over c n g of z z minus z naught raised to n dz plus let us talk about this one. But see, equation number three says the value of this integration is zero. So this is zero. So therefore, what can we write? Integration over C, G of Z, S of Z dz is equal to summation and running from zero to infinity. Integration over C, A n, sorry, I should write A n, G of Z, Z minus Z naught raised to n dz. Okay, so in this way be, prove the result. So therefore, this result says if you have that g of z, okay, which is defined on the c, or which is continuous on c, and if you write in this way, then integration and summation can be easily interchanged. So in this way, we prove the result, make a screenshot of it, then we will stop. Thank you. See you.